Vegeta has just ascended to his new God of Destruction form. We don't know what the name of it is yet. Is it Destroyer God Vegeta, God of Destruction Vegeta? What exactly is this form? And unfortunately, the chapter ended with Vegeta transforming and we didn't get to see yet what he can do with it, but I think we can all assume he's going to slap Granola around. Hi guys, I am Mastar and welcome to the Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 75 preview. As we're talking about Vegeta using his new form, what his new abilities are going to be, and what's gonna happen in his battle with Granola, who had already defeated Ultra Instinct Goku. Now, just a heads up, sometimes when we get new forms or new characters that we don't have names for yet, they will be released either in a magazine or somewhere online. And so when I get that information, what exactly Vegeta's form is actually called, I will make a video on it. So make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications enable. I'm equally curious as to what the color scheme is for Vegeta's new form. We don't know that he has a purple aura and his hair is purple. That's something that fan artists are just assuming simply because it's Hakai power, it, which is purple, just like all the power and aura that Beerus has and the other gods of destruction. So you'd think that it probably would be purple, but he could very well have black hair or white hair or gray hair, something along those lines. And we also don't know what color his eyes are either, but fan artists have been going crazy about Vegeta's new form on Twitter and they've done some fantastic art with different color schemes. Some of these look amazing and we should get some sort of promotional material which will show this form as well coming up in the next couple weeks. So make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications enabled. But today I want to talk more about the battle between God of Destruction Vegeta versus Granola. We're going to take a look back at some of the fights Vegeta has had, particularly when he gets a power boost and what happens in those fights. So first, let's talk about every Everyone that Vegeta has actually killed or defeated in battle. He destroyed Cybermen, he killed Nappa, then in the Namek Saga he destroyed Kui, Dodoria, a bunch of Namics, Zarbon, Goldo, Raccoon, Jace, and then in the Android Saga, Android 19, and then in the Boo Saga, Poi Poi, and in Movie 7 he basically destroyed Android 15, but that's pretty much it. To this date, Vegeta has never been the one to take out the big bad. It's always been Goku or Gohan in terms of Cell or a fusion between Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta by himself has never been the one to take out the victory on the big bad. No Frieza, no Cell, no Boo, not Jiren. He was able to take people out that were kind of subordinates of the big bad, but he's never been able to take out the big bad himself. Which begs the question, is Granola the big bad in this arc? And if he is, is Vegeta going to get the first W against a big bad in his entire career? Now, one of Vegeta's most redeeming moments in the entirety of Dragon Ball was when he destroyed Android 19. Goku had just fallen victim to Android 19 because he had the heart virus kick in, and that's when Vegeta arrived and turned into a Super Saiyan for the first time publicly, ripping off Android 19's hands and taking the victory. However, that was not the big bad of the arc, but he still did get a pretty big W right there. I think that what's gonna happen in this chapter is something similar to the Android 19 fight. I don't believe that Granola is actually the big bad. We still don't know who Oatmeal is, who could be pulling some sort of strings or he could be an AI or something like that. And the heaters are also making a wish using the Dragon Balls right now, and they're probably going to become stronger than even Granola. I believe that in this chapter, Vegeta is going to absolutely stomp Granola. One of the main reasons being that Vegeta's destruction form is a perfect counter to Granola. He can nullify all of Granola's energy attacks, which are one of his main strengths, by being able to use his sniping eye. If he can't snipe because all of his attacks get nullified, then that completely removes his eye from the equation. And that will leave the fight to pretty much brute strength and speed, which is Vegeta's specialty. So in many ways, Granola was the perfect counter to Goku's Ultra Instinct because of the sniping eye. Even though Goku's body moves very fast on its own, Granola was able to predict his movements using his eye power and still hit Goku in vital points. So in the same sense, I believe that Vegeta's new form will be the perfect counter to Granola, and it should give him the upper hand. But there is one major thing in that Granola's speed is absolutely ridiculous. We saw that he can basically move faster than instantaneous movement, meaning that if Vegeta Vegeta is going to win in a battle of speed and strength, he has to somehow be equal or even stronger than Granola in that same term of speed and strength, which would mean that Vegeta's new form gives him the potential to rival even Ultra Instinct 
or even surpass it. Now, why did Vegeta even transform in the first place? I'm guessing it's similar to Goku. It's his Saiyan body adapting to using God power. In the same way that Ultra Instinct transforms Goku, giving him the silver eyes and silver hair as a method of adapting and strengthening the body in order to house Ultra Instinct God power, I believe that Vegeta's new form is similar for God of Destruction energy. And so if Vegeta in such a short time was able to transform his body in order to house his God power, and we all know how much transformations affect Saiyans, it's very, very possible that he could be even stronger and faster than Granola while nullifying all of his attacks. Meaning that right now, Vegeta potentially, as we'll see in the next chapter, if he defeats Granola, he has temporarily surpassed Goku, but only if he's able to defeat Granola. Now, if we take a look back at DBZ, every time Vegeta achieved a new transformation, like his first time going Super Saiyan against Android 19, and his first time going Super Saiyan Grade 2 against Semi-Perfect Cell, he was an absolute monster. And in this case, it's not like he can just let Granola wish for more power. Granola is at his limit. It's not like he can let Granola absorb Android 18 and become perfect and just overpower him, which I hope he wouldn't make that mistake again. Granola literally cannot get any stronger. So if Vegeta is stronger than Granola, it's not like he can run away and get stronger and come back and beat Vegeta. The only way Vegeta should lose in that scenario is if he somehow lets his guard down and Granola is able to snipe him somehow. I really don't see Vegeta losing after he just achieves his brand new form. In classic DBZ tropey manner, once you transform or once you achieve the next level of power, you're gonna win the fight at least for a little while. And that's why I think Vegeta absolutely is going to destroy Granola, well not, uh, not kill him, but he's going to win the battle in Dragon Ball Super chapter 75. Until the battle gets interrupted, I think the wish is going to come off using the Cerulean Dragon Balls and the heaters are gonna wish to be insanely powerful, and that's when Granola will finally get some sense knocked into him that he's been played this whole time, and the Saiyans that he's battling right now, Goku and Vegeta, are not bad, and he's actually going to end up teaming up with them. I think it's at that point that Vegeta will probably end up losing to the heaters. And I think that because if you just take a look back at the history of Dragon Ball Z, and every time Vegeta has become the strongest for a brief moment, he usually takes a quick W, and then someone stronger comes along, he's extremely cocky, and he ends up losing. It's happened over and over and over again, and as we saw from the moral arc, Toyotaro and Toriyama love to take ideas from the previous Dragon Ball Z arcs and rehash them into Dragon Ball Super. They like to use the tried and true because they don't want to take major risks and possibly irritate the fan base with some wonky story. They want to give us what we've gotten before because it worked before. Hence, pretty much the entirety of Dragon Ball Super Broly. And guess what? It's sold like crazy. In fact, I don't even think Granola is even going to be remotely even a match for Vegeta in his new form. Maybe he'll get a little bit close to getting an attack off on Vegeta, but I'm pretty sure, my prediction anyway, is that Vegeta is going to absolutely stomp Granola so badly, and Granola is gonna be wondering, how is this possible? I was the strongest in the universe, the dragon lied to me, and that's something else I wanna talk about here as well. When the wish was made, Granola became the strongest, but during that exact moment, Goku and Vegeta were training with Whis and Beerus on Beerus' planet, and Whis said that while you're training, you should be trying to beat yourselves from the previous day and grow stronger every single day. And back then, Vegeta was like, we train daily, so isn't that like a natural progression to be stronger? Isn't that like, what kind of nugget of wisdom is this? But that line alone has stayed truer and truer, and I think we're gonna get a big reveal on that line come Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 75, because while Granola was the strongest at the point of the wish, Goku and Vegeta continued to train and get stronger, and even as Vegeta was battling against Granola and losing in Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 74, he said that he was getting stronger as the fight progressed, whereas Granola cannot get stronger. And I think that's a big revelation because now that Vegeta has transformed, which I don't know if he had this before he landed on Planet Serial or not, but now that he's transformed, it's pretty clear that Vegeta is stronger than Granola. If somehow he's still not, 
If they give us this form of Vegeta and he loses anyway, it will be the worst writing in anime history. He's gotta win here, at least for a little while. We still don't know the full capabilities of Granola and it's still possible that he could be holding back some tremendously insane power. He has shown capabilities of both Ultra Instinct and Hakai and instantaneous movement. And he's also said that those abilities are only a small fraction of his power. So who knows what else this man has up his sleeve. But at the very minimum, Vegeta has got to put in some serious work in this fight. My prediction is the battle blasts off, Vegeta completely and utterly punishes Granola, puts him in serious pain. He starts freaking out because he doesn't know why he's losing. He figures that he's supposed to be the strongest in the universe and this doesn't make any sense, but then he reveals his true power and he either still loses anyway because Vegeta's nullifying all of his attacks or he's somehow able to beat Vegeta. Maybe he exhausts himself entirely from the long strain battle and they both collapse. At some point in this, in the next chapter, I believe we will see the heaters grant their wish to be the new strongest in the universe. And I think we're gonna have the tide of the battle turn there. Very, very soon, it's pretty clear to me that Granola has to become a good guy and team up with Goku and Vegeta. He's not a bad person. We've seen him take care of the Sugar Jins and his old Namekian friend. He was completely brainwashed and manipulated into going after Goku and Vegeta. And so I think Vegeta most likely is going to win and snap him out of it and make him realize that the heaters are the true enemy. But by that time, it will be too late as they will grant their wish. But I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you think is going to happen in the next chapter? Do you think Vegeta is going to beat Granola? Leave your comments below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and I'll see you in the next one.